Welcome to Maynard's Wild World of Science. What up, curious explorers, and welcome back to Maynard's Wild World of Science. On today's episode, we are going to explore cranes. Not that crane, these cranes. Now, not only am I a scientist, I'm also a civil engineer. Do you know what civil engineers do? Civil has to do with civilization or people. Civil engineers design, build, and maintain things like roads, buildings, and bridges. Basically, anything that people need to live in or transport on. It's pretty cool, right? So, let's do a breakdown of today's key words. Crane, a big machine that lifts and moves heavy things. Tower crane, a crane fixed in one spot used to build tall buildings. Mobile crane, a crane on wheels that can drive to different places. Pulley, a wheel with a rope around it that makes lifting easier. Lever, a stiff bar that pivots like a seesaw. Counterweight, a heavy block that keeps the crane from tipping over. Cranes are absolutely incredible. They can help us build all types of structures like super tall buildings or super long bridges. But did you know that cranes use pretty simple things like pulleys, levers, and counterweights to lift heavy objects? Imagine lifting a car with just your arm. Pretty crazy, right? So let's try to answer today's big question. How does a pulley help lift heavy loads? Cranes come in different shapes and sizes. A tower crane, for example, stands still and reaches up really, really high while a mobile crane can drive around and work on smaller construction projects. Engineers choose the type of crane they use to fit a specific job. And speaking of engineers, I have a good friend of mine who's also a civil engineer and focuses on large structures. His name is Dr. Nehemiah Mabry. Let's give him a buzz and talk about all these cool cranes and how they're used. Hey, Dr. Nehemiah, how's it going? Hey, what's going on, Maynard? Now, of course, I know you, but our curious explorers that are watching here may not. Could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and also why you wanted to become an engineer? Absolutely. I knew I wanted to do something that would help people. And when I realized that engineers use math and science to solve problems, everyday problems, for things that you and I use, whether it's the bridges that we drive over, this building that I'm in, I knew it was something that I wanted to do. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. I always love a cool origin story. So today we're talking all about cranes and how they're used. But before we know how they function, we need to know about the parts and pieces they're made of. So Dr. Nehemiah, could you walk us through what a crane is actually made of and how it functions? Of course, Maynard, my pleasure. Now, every part of a crane is important. It helps lift heavy objects around during construction. See, this part of the crane is called the boom. The boom is a long, fixed, or hydraulic arm that's attached to the main base of the crane. It can extend to different lengths to help lift up different sized objects, which is why we call it a telescopic crane. This part of a tower crane is called a jib and it actually works as a lever. A lever is a stiff arm that pivots around a fixed point called a fulcrum. This lever helps move large items like steel beams or other building materials. Oh, I see something that looks like a spinning wheel with long ropes attached. Could you walk us through what that is? Aha, yeah, for sure. That's actually what we call the pulleys. They are part of a system that helps move things up and down much easier. And it really reduces the amount of force needed to actually lift. Oh. And you see this big heavy block on the back? That is called a counterweight. And it's placed on the opposite side of where the heavy object we need to lift is to help the entire crane stay balanced. Oh yeah, because the last thing we want is a large crane tower tipping over in the middle of the city, right? <laughs> That's right. That would be a disaster. Because engineering isn't all about building. It's also about safety. Cranes need to be built safely as well to protect people and all of the things around them. And all of these parts, whether it's the boom that we use to reach things, 
the lever for lifting, the pulleys that help share the load, and the counterweight for the balance, all assist engineers like me to make amazing buildings that you see and sometimes are inside of every day. <laughs> That's so awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Mia and I, for breaking down, or should I say, building up everything about cranes. It was so good seeing you. We'll see you later, all right? Absolutely. What up, Curious Explorers? Now that we've spoken with Dr. Nehemiah about cranes, I've got some more friends to introduce you to. These young builders use design principles, science, engineering, and most important, play to solve design challenges around the world. They just sent us new footage from their latest adventures. Say hello to the Built From Scratch crew, Kai, Luke, Kingston, Miguel, and their lead designer, Jamal. Built from scratch. Yeah, we on a mission. Restoring what's broken with skill and precision. Old to the new, we a blended tradition. Watch what we do, pay attention and listen. First, we identify the problem and need. Build with the elders on how to proceed. Once we get the green light and everyone's agreed, then we make a creative solution to succeed. Miguel draws the blueprints, design so precise. Case that makes one cut after measuring twice. Jamal matches the materials with the plans and Kai brings the beauty with his gifted hands. Now, Luke, he's a real life documentarian capturing the stories that the culture is carrying five brilliant minds with the skills to match come see what we create when it's built from scratch built from scratch you know it's built from scratch huh. it's built from scratch <laughs> that was fun i can't wait to see what the built from scratch crew has in store for us on their next adventures you know, I studied civil engineering at the University of Washington in Seattle, and civil engineers do many things from designing bridges and roads to utilizing machines like cranes that lift heavy things. So why don't we dive deeper into one part of these cranes that does something really special, the pulleys. I think it's time for my handy magnifying glass. Nice. Whoa, now that's pretty cool. A pulley is a wheel with a groove for a rope, like this, and is designed to support movement and change the direction of force. With one pulley, the rope goes over a single wheel, and lifting feels much easier because the pulley shares the load. With two pulleys, the rope loops through two wheels, and lifting feels even lighter. Each extra wheel shares the work, so you need less force to lift the same weight. That's how cranes use pulleys to move huge beams with very little effort. Great job, explorers. Let's zoom back out. The key to any good experiment is safety. So before we get hands-on, let's run through our safety checklist. Clear and safe workspace, check safety glasses. Check safe or protective clothing. Check gloves and ear protection if needed. Check, and most importantly, parental supervision. Check, if you're not an adult, of course. Remember, safety isn't just smart, it's science. So now that our safety checklist is complete, it's time to start pushing, or rather, pulling. All you need is a cup, oh, some rocks, a skewer, some string, and some cardboard. Here I have my cup filled with some small rocks. And let's say I want to get those rocks to the top of some imaginary rock fort. I have to find a way to be able to easily pull them up. Now, I know I may look strong, but cranes, and specifically their pulleys, are there to help share that workload so that my big muscles can get a little break. So we're going to design our own simple pulley machine. I'll poke three holes in the side of my cup to be able to attach my string and connect each piece right here in the middle, like so, and attach it to one larger string. Form your own tower crane by cutting out pieces of cardboard that look like this, and then taping the ends together to get a shape like this one here. You can then poke your skewer through the top part of your cardboard. Now, when I wrap my string around the skewer, I have my very own pulley system where I can pull up and lower my rocks to whatever height I choose creating my very own crane that does all of the heavy lifting. Trust me, your muscles will be very happy with you. So cool. 
<laughs> level up. If we want to take things to another level, an important concept around cranes has to do with the center of mass. Using just a cup, a matchstick, or a toothpick, and some forks, you can see how center of mass and balance works. Connect your two forks by intertwining the ends together, then place a matchstick in between them and place the end of the match on the edge of your cup. With the right adjustment, ooh, you should see your forks balance perfectly right on the edge. That's because the center of mass now lies at a point right in between your forks, just below the edge of the cup. Knowing the center of mass is important in cranes so that when your weight is added to the lever and the pulleys, the crane doesn't tip over. A pretty important factor since the goal is to build a building and not destroy it. <laughs> Growing up, I was a huge fan of Lego, as I'm sure many of you curious explorers at home are too. My favorite thing to do with Legos was not actually build whatever was on the box. I loved coming up with my own designs, buildings, or other structures. Way before I even knew anything about engineering, many amazing pioneers paved the way for me to have all the opportunities that I do now. Archibald Alfonso Alexander was born in 1888 and was the first black graduate of the University of Iowa's engineering program. He built strong rainbow arc bridges and airfields that still stand today. Hattie T. Scott Peterson in 1946 became the first African-American woman in the U.S. to earn a civil engineering degree. She mapped flood zones in California and designed levees for the Army Corps of Engineers to protect towns from floods. Howard P. Grant was the first black graduate of UC Berkeley's College of Engineering in 1948. As San Francisco's first black city engineer, he planned roads, sewers, and mentored young engineers to break down barriers. These engineers asked, how can we build better and use science and math to solve big puzzles? So take a look around. What bridges, roads, and buildings help keep you safe? Those are all the work of civil engineers. Thanks for taking a moment with me. All right, Curious Explorers, let's review what we learned today about cranes. First up, the boom. Now remember, the longer the boom, the further and higher the crane can reach. That's right. A long boom is like a telescopic arm, enabling us to construct incredibly high buildings. Next up, the lever and pulleys. The lever helps distribute the load across a crane, and each pulley we add reduces the amount of force needed to lift. Exactly. The more loops, the easier it is to lift heavy loads. Absolutely. And lastly, the counterweight. That heavy block at the back keeps the crane from tipping over when it lifts big steel beams. Yup. Finding the center of mass is important to keep things around a crane tower safe. So the boom gives us reach, levers and pulleys help share the load, and the counterweight keeps us balanced. Absolutely. Now it's your turn, explorers. I have a challenge for you. Find a crane near your home or while you're on a drive. Is it tall like a tower crane or small like a mobile crane? Once you find one, try out your own experiment with the help of an adult at home. See if you can make your own pulley system or find the center of mass with different objects. Then take a photo or video of your demo and share it with us. Have your parent or guardian upload it to Instagram and tag Maynard's Wild World of Science. We want to see your levers holding toys or your pulleys lifting marbles. Science is all about getting creative and trying out new ideas. So I can't wait to see where your imagination will take you. And always remember, cool mind is a curious one. See you next time.